So I only found out about this game less than a week before launch. I was watching a skill up news video and I was like, hold on, hold on, what is that? Narita Boy is best described as an action adventure game, but that doesn't even begin to describe what it's actually like to play it. It's an homage to the neon soaked retro future of the 1980s and it draws influence for both its game design and story from sources such as Castlevania, Another World, He-Man, The Last Starfighter, classic anime and there's some serious Tron vibes here too. You play as a teenage boy who gets sucked into a virtual world called the Digital Kingdom via his computer. You've been summoned there to find the memories of the Digital Kingdom's creator, and with the power of the Techno Sword, yes that is an amazing name, your goal is to save the world from an evil program called him. As someone who grew up during the 80s and has an affinity for the movies, music and games of that era, there's a lot about Narita Boy that speaks to a younger version of myself. It's for this reason that I have to preface this review with the fact that it's likely to be very biased, but I think that's okay. This game is clearly a love letter to the 80s and it's big hair, big shoulders, big socks, big muscles and big pants. Narita Boy was created by Studio Koba, a small Barcelona-based indie dev team formed in 2016. Narita Boy is their first game and they describe it as a poetic, subtle and beautiful handcrafted experience, which sounds a bit like hyperbole, but that's until you boot it up. The game's visuals are absolutely stunning. Each of the more than 300 screens were created individually. The animation was handled in a similar way, with every sprite's animation being drawn per frame. This includes all of the effects too, so every explosion and blast of energy was animated by hand. This was undoubtedly a very time consuming and tedious way to approach the animation, but I think the results speak for themselves. Narita Boy is beautiful in motion and definitely delivers on its promise of a handcrafted experience. The soundtrack is equally outstanding. Actually, that's not doing it justice. The soundtrack is the shit. It's a real mix of 80s pop, synth wave and electro disco. It perfectly fits the game's visuals and it demands that you play this game with the volume absolutely cranked. On the surface this might look like a simple 2D side-scrolling action game, which it kind of is, but it's also incredibly story driven. If you were hoping to check your brain at the door and play something along the lines of Streets of Rage 4, then I'm afraid you're out of luck. If you don't enjoy regularly pausing to read stuff, then the slower pace and focus on narrative here might just put you off. I'm not exaggerating either. Narita Boy is extremely dialogue heavy for this type of game. You constantly need to talk with the various eccentric characters of the digital kingdom to find out where to go and what to do. These guys aren't exactly succinct in their delivery either. They tend to waffle on and speak in riddles and a lot of the time they don't give you much useful information at all. I also found it kind of weird that Narita Boy never speaks. Interactions with other characters are just generally one way exposition dumps, but I guess that's the least weird thing in a game where you ride a digital Mac donkey and occasionally throw up. It's all very well written though and if you have an understanding of coding then you're going to get a real kick out of the language they use. I will admit that my patience drew a little thin at times, but I think so long as you know what you're getting into, it's an excellent story overall and worth playing through to see its conclusion. Gameplay is a mixture of combat, puzzle solving and platforming. None of these components are super deep, but the game mixes things up frequently enough that you don't have time to get bored. I guess you could describe it as a metrovania because there's certainly a fair bit of backtracking to access previously locked areas. Although backtracking is generally restricted to a specific section and once you've completed it you'll move on to a new one. So while backtracking is a thing, you don't spend ages looking at the same scenery. You also acquire new abilities as you progress that give you additional combat and movement options. These are usually introduced to deal with a new enemy type or to help reach new areas. They also provide quite a bit of variety and all of them look great in action. As I mentioned earlier, the combat isn't incredibly deep, but there is a shitload of enemy types. Each has their own patterns and weaknesses to learn and you'll progressively need to fight more of them at the same time. There are plenty of boss fights too, and just like the standard enemies, they each have their own unique attack patterns to figure out. It's not a terribly hard game, but I don't think it's supposed to be. 
You can die, but there isn't really much penalty for doing so. You have unlimited lives and you generally respawn close to where you died or at a super convenient checkpoint. The boss fights were really the only situations where I got momentarily stuck, because if you die, you typically have to restart them. The puzzles aren't complicated either and most of the time just require the memorization of a few icons or a bit of exploration. Again, I don't think you're supposed to get stumped by any of them. The game's pacing has an excellent cadence, which is bookended by these oddly poignant memory sequences. Honestly, I thought they were a bit of a juxtaposition when compared to the gameplay, but somehow it works. My playthrough clocked in at about 9 hours, and I did feel by the second half that it could have been just a bit shorter. The sequence of finding a key to a locked door and searching for icons to unlock a portal did become a little repetitive. I also found that having to remember where certain doors or switches were located was a bit tiring too. I'm not the biggest fan of Metrovanias though, so your mileage may vary. I played the Steam version using a DualShock 4, and the controls are a little loose for my liking. This is mainly due to movement being mapped to the analog stick, and it makes some of the platforming feel less precise than it should. I would have liked to have been able to use the D-pad for movement, but it's tied up with other commands that wouldn't feel great if mapped to the analog sticks. It didn't take me long to get over this though, and you can play using a keyboard for more precise inputs if that's your thing. By default, the game is presented with a pseudo CRT filter. Now, I normally don't care for these types of filters, but in this case I think it works quite well. The game is really going for an over-the-top vintage VHS look, and this filter does a good job at achieving that. If you prefer a sharper looking image though, you can remove it, and turning it off can also make it easier to see what's going on. Like I said, I played the Steam version on a Mac, and for the most part I didn't have any performance issues. There were a couple of times where some of the stage graphics didn't load properly, and a couple of times I got a black screen on startup, but this never impacted my experience in a significant way. I was playing a pre-release version, so there's a good chance that these minor issues have been or will be patched at some point. While Narita Boy borrows many gameplay ideas from other games and proudly wears its influences on its sleeve, it never feels derivative. It's definitely not for everyone, and if you don't love beautifully animated 2D action games that were inspired by the 80s and have a pumping synthwave soundtrack, then you might want to give this a miss. If, however, you happen to think all of that sounds fucking incredible, then Narita Boy is the real deal. I'm not gonna lie, this is a pretty weird game and a little art house at times, but if you like what you see and are down for a surprisingly emotionally charged story that hit me in the feels more than once, then this is definitely worth your time and money. It's available on all the major platforms via their respective digital stores, and additionally, it's on Game Pass, so if you happen to have Game Pass, then it's definitely worth checking out. If you enjoyed this video, a like is always appreciated, and of course, a dislike will let me know that I need to improve. If you're new around here, hit the subscribe button and the bell to be notified when new videos go live. And if you want to support the channel, head on over to the Patreon page. Otherwise, thanks for your time.